So the need for new affordable housing, we know that's certainly real, but something often lost in all these discussions about new housing is the necessary infrastructure needed to support that housing and obviously the price tag that comes with that. A study carried out by the Federation of Canadian Municipalities found that, on average, every new home will need about $107,000 worth of infrastructure built to support that new home. To talk more about how infrastructure needs to factor into this whole conversation around new housing is Maddie Simatiki, Director of the Infrastructure Institute at the University of Toronto. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning, Lindsay. I know it feels like everyone's focused on the housing when we need to talk about the fact that these houses, they need schools. We need, I mean, there's so much that's needed. Do you feel like the issue of infrastructure is being overlooked when it comes to these conversations? I think this is such an important conversation. The focus in Canada right now is on housing and rightly so. We are in a housing crisis. People are desperate for affordable places to live. And yet we really need to be thinking about all the infrastructure that goes along with building great communities, because that's ultimately what we're building here. So we need the schools, the libraries, the daycares, the rec centers, the parks, everything that makes a great community, plus all the retail and commercial services that make an inviting place to live. We need to make sure we're coordinating, and that gets only harder when we're trying to build at the speed that we're going. The scale and the speed are making this a challenge, but we need to make sure that everything fits together so that we're building great places for people to live. What will happen down the road if new housing developments are built without the proper infrastructure to support them? We'll end up with a mess. We'll end up with communities that are not livable. If the civil infrastructure is not in place, we'll have traffic jams. We might have flooding or sewer backups. If the social infrastructure is not in place, we'll have isolation. We'll have communities where people don't have the spaces to come together, to meet, to build a shared future together. And if we don't have the parks and the green spaces, those are the lungs of our community mm -hmm. and they're the places where people recreate. And so that will be sorely missing too. So there could be health implications. So really we need to be building complete communities and that's where planning comes in its coordination and ensuring that you're thinking about all of the pieces of the puzzle and make sure they fit together. I like how you said that the lungs of our community, those green spaces that we so desperately need. So earlier this month, the federal government announced a new $6 billion Canada Housing Infrastructure Fund. A billion dollars will go to the creation of urgent infrastructure, so things like water, waste systems. The remaining $5 billion will be negotiated between the government and the provinces and territories. How crucial is it that the federal and provincial governments step in to help municipalities shoulder the costs of all this? It's critical, and your stat off the top is exactly right. It costs a fortune per housing unit for the municipalities, $107,000 per housing unit in infrastructure costs. The municipalities do not have that money. They are cash-strapped right across the country, and they need their provincial and federal partners to come to the table. And now you're starting to see an all-hands-on-deck approach. We've recognized that we're in a crisis, and they are coming together. Now is the part for the negotiations and the coordination to make sure that this is done in a way that's systematic and all the infrastructure is in place to support the housing that's going to be built. The city of Calgary, for example, estimated that to build four new developments, which would house 60,000 people in its north end, it will need to spend at least $535 million on infrastructure. Are there ways that cities can leverage existing infrastructure to increase the housing supply? That's such a great point. We have so much infrastructure in our communities that could be leveraged and used more efficiently. We can be using publicly owned land and we can be building on top of or beside some of the big facilities that we already have to make sure that we're getting the most out of the existing infrastructure. It is extremely expensive if we start to build outwards and think that we're going to build in suburban single family home types of communities right across the country to house the growing population. We need to intensify. We can do that in a gentle way uh, and we can also do it on a larger in a larger scale way on some of the publicly owned sites but we need to be making sure that we're getting the most out of the infrastructure we have today the prime minister gave municipalities a heads up earlier this month that the government intends to start tying federal transit dollars to affordable housing and one of the things the federal government wants cities to do is to build more housing within 800 meters of transit centers in your opinion is that a good idea that's just smart policy. The transit infrastructure uh, is there. We're spending huge amounts of dollars right across the country, country on transit. We need to then make sure that we get the most out of it, that it spurs the type of housing so people can use that transit, uh, and then that also they have great places to live around it. We've seen that across the political parties, that all the political parties are now trying to tie their dollars to try to incentivize and encourage the municipalities uh, to intensify. Land use is a municipal policy, but this doesn't need to be adversarial. I think we're starting to see 
see much more collaboration. We're starting to see the ways that they're going to work together, that they're going to negotiate a type of shared future, use the dollars to try to drive the type of intensification, types of housing units that Canadians need, and the types of communities that are livable uh, for, uh, for our population. Maddie Simia Tiki, thank you so much for being here this morning. Thanks for having me, Lindsay. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.